tonight. How he's so mindful of us is so amazing to me. He's mindful of us. He's our Savior and he loves us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles and turn with me. Thank you for standing at the reading of the word. Well, it's been a long time since I sung a song, Brother Billy. Yeah, it is good for me. It's good for me. I got a lot of roots in that song. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's been a... And y'all just going to have to forgive me because if the Lord allows me to pastor as long as Brother McKinney did, I'm never going to quit talking about my daddy. Never. But the other day I just got overwhelmed, Brother Pete, wishing he could see what's happening. Because I can promise you, and my, my dad had an ego. Everybody does. But he wanted his kids to as far succeed anything he ever did. And if he could be here with us right now, well, if he was here, I probably wouldn't be. But I've been blessed, saints. We've been blessed. Hallelujah. We've been blessed. There's been a, the presence of the Lord has been desiring to move throughout this whole day in a powerful and in a mighty way. But there has been, uh, there's been two occasions lately. Uh, well, there's been more than that, but there's been two in particular. And um, Brother Pete, when I would be praying, and I pray through the tabernacle, and, and let me say, if you're not doing that, and I know there's a lot that aren't, Please try to start doing it. Please try to start doing it. Brother Damesworth calls me every Sunday and tells me what happened at his church. And he's preaching through it. And there's one lady that she started praying through it regularly. And uh, she's the one that called him the other day. And uh, uh, she, pull, she had to pull off the road because she got in the spirit was talking in tongues so so vehemently she had to pull over, Brother Rice, or she's about to kill somebody. And today he, he just it works. It works. It works. But I was praying. And and I'll let you be seated. Some of you have been sitting a long time already, and you may be sitting a while yet. Uh and there's been some different things going on and and uh, different uh, problems and situations that have arisen. Been going on for weeks. Different things have been happening. And, and Brother Pete, I, I'm praying to enter into the presence of the Lord. But then my mind gets on those problems, and that's all I can think about. Brother Terry, that's where my prayer focus goes. And Brother Robbie, I'll start praising him. And before you know it, Brother Billy, without even trying, I'm already back at the problem. Lord, I love you, but I need your help on this. Is anybody else? Huh? Oh, I just felt the Holy Ghost just go whoosh on me. Turn to your neighbor and say, God's got big plans for you. If you believe it. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, 
they were all with one accord in one place. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all, everybody say all. It doesn't say one mind in one accord. Now that's how it gets quoted all the time. That's not what it says. They were in one accord with one accord in one place. Pray with me. Lord, I love you. I thank you, God. Thank you for this word of encouragement you've given us tonight. I believe in God. Somebody's life's going to be changed forever. I'm believing that the power of the Holy Ghost uh, is going to invade somebody's comfort zone, that the beauty of the Spirit is going to manifest itself. Uh, I pray, God, and speak under the authority of the name of Jesus uh, that you have free reign to move in this house. Uh, and in the name of the Lord, I praise you for doing just that, for doing just that, for doing just that. Clap your hands under the Lord if you love him. Clap your hands unto the Lord, all ye people, the psalmist said, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. 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 And you may be seated. Praise the Lord. They were in the upper room because the Lord told them to go there. And Brother Pete, he told them to go there and stay there. He told them to go and tarry, to wait in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued or clothed or, or completely enveloped with power from on high. They obeyed what the Lord said. Stay in focus, Brother Billy, until, stay in focus until I want you to know if you read in the scripture, he gave them no clue as to the time frame. He gave them no idea of how long they would have to wait. He just said, stay there until you be endued with power from on high. But they all stayed, and they all not only stayed in the same place, but they stayed in the same mindset. They stayed in one accord. And the word I want to bring to you tonight, that the focus word is focused. No pun intended. They stayed focused. The word focus means a central point as of attraction, attention, or activity. Something that you're drawn to. Something that holds your attention. Something that you invest your energy in. I come to preach to you tonight about your focus. I want you to know there's several things that happened in that upper room. The 11, and I touched on it this morning, the 11 remaining disciples chose a replacement for Judas. They conducted business while waiting on the Lord. When I read that, Brother Billy, it blew my mind to think that 120 folks are gathered together and the 11 disciples are doing a work of the Lord. They're conducting business. They're coming to a decision, and yet they stayed focused. They didn't allow anything that that happened among them uh, to deter them from what God had for them. He had promised them uh, that something great was going to happen and it was going to happen to them uh, in Jerusalem. But they had to stay. They had to have the right mindset. They had to stay focused. There were family members there. There were mamas and daddies there. There were fishermen, tax collectors, carpenters, wives, etc. There were 120 different people. People from all sorts of positions and walks of life. But they all stayed focused. They did not, hear me right now, they did not all think from the same perspective. But they all thought on the same thing. You and I do not think from the same perspective. You and I will not think from the same uh, preferences and from the same mindset. We like different colors and we like different tones and we we like different conversations and, and we are attracted to different people. But I cannot tell you that it's possible for you to, to be your own individual and still be on the same page as your neighbor. Brother Billy, they had big plans. 
They had big plans. They were headed and they were going to get a hold of what the Lord had promised them. Their world had just been rocked. Jesus had died. But then Brother Shannon, he arose from the dead. And they were with him for 40 days. And he told them great things and promised them great things. And then he said, if you want to have the best thing happen to you, another comforter come down to you. Go to Jerusalem and you stay there. Until... Until, waiting on the promise, we in this assembly have been allowed to look into a beautiful place, to see and feel the presence of the Lord. But I come to tell you tonight that the best has not come yet. There are better things to come. There are more souls to win. There are more miracles to see performed. There are more mind-blowing things that's going to happen. It is important that we don't lose focus. It is important that we're not distracted or swayed from the goal. What is the goal, you ask? I'm glad you ask. The goal, Brother Pete, is to win the world. The goal is to see hundreds and yes, thousands baptized in water and baptized with the gift of the Holy Ghost. The goal is to see this church filled and to build another church. Every time I've been watching Wesley work over here and every time I've been out, every time I look at it, Brother Billy, I think I just got to fix that for a little while. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Let me tell you something, honey. You better pack you a bag. You better get you a few mules. And you better load up and get ready to go. Because God's got big plans for this church. God's got big plans for this city. God's got big plans for you people. But if you lose your focus. It'll slip right through the cracks. And he will pass on. He will pass on. We cannot become so enamored and so attracted with drama and problems and issues in our life that we lose sight of the ultimate goal. The reason why that I enter into relationship with prayer, the reason why I fast, the reason why I attend church as faithfully as I possibly can is because I believe God wants to save every soul that I come in contact with. Brother McKinney, if he don't heal one more time, if he don't provide another financial need, if he don't provide another job, provide another house, provide another car, or do any other good thing, I know that he's going to fill more people with the Holy Ghost. So my focus cannot be things. My focus cannot be people necessarily as far as people pleasing. My focus has got to be on souls. Every song I sing, every word I say, every testimony I do, every bag of groceries I buy, every trip I take to Walmart, every day when I punch the clock, I've got to have souls on my mind. Y'all don't kick me out of church, but Brother David, I'll see you one headache, and I'll raise you an earache. But you know what? I'm in it to win it. Come hell or high water, God's going to have revival around here. Oh, he cut to Shondolo Bo, Cotolo Boha. Whoa! Because I've looked back. Brother Pete, I've looked in the wall. I've looked beyond. I've got a vision in my pocket. I've had it written down for over around 10 years. God's going to do great things in this place. But it's my job to make sure you don't lose focus.
in Hebrews chapter 6, the writer to the Hebrews <laughs> I'm glad I know the devil's a liar. I'm glad I know that the promises of God are in him, yea, and in him, amen. Yes, let it be. So be it. I believe it with every fiber of my being. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. The writer to the Hebrews having just issued a warning of the fateful consequences of being immature spiritually. The writer has just warned them what happens to immature people, immature spiritually. Can I say something right now? Thank you. I'm thrilled to death to have 30 people come into Monday night prayer meeting. But in the same breath, I'm disappointed that I don't have 50. I'm thrilled to death that we've had 21 weekend and 18 another weekend come pray at least an hour. But I'm not, I'm not satisfied with it. I want 30 or 40. Come on now. Come on now. If you think I'm just going to sit by and let you slide weed down the sliding board, uh, you've lost your mind. We're going to push. We're going to press. We're going to strive. We're going to fast. We're going to preach. We're going to pray. We're going to reach. We're going to stretch. We're going to stretch. We're going to push. We're going to fight. We're going to claw. We're going to scratch. All the way till Jesus comes. He just issued a warning of the fateful consequences of being immature spiritually. You will not mature spiritually if you don't come to church, read your Bible, fast, and pray. You will not grow spiritually. I like that so much, I'm going to say it one more time. You will not mature spiritually if you don't attend church faithful, read your Bible, fast, and pray. And I'll amen that myself. Of, he warned them of being fleshly motivated instead of spiritually motivated. And then there's a strong, strong admonition given of the danger. I said of the danger of falling away. You have got to have your... Hear me right now, saints. Uh, you have got to have your mind made up. Uh, you have got to have a fire down in your bosom. Uh, you have got to have a commitment uh, where you've drawn a line uh, and you've not drawn it in crayon or in chalk, uh, but it's, it's grooved in the ground through your prayer and through your commitment. Uh, you've got to make up your mind. You're going to make it. As much power is present in this place uh, and as much potential as I see as your pastor and as your friend, uh, I know the devil's coming after many of you, but I come to tell you that in the world you shall have tribulation. But Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Don't fall away. Quitting's not an option for nobody, for no reason. You can't quit. You're on your way to Jerusalem. You're on your way to heaven. You're on your way to an eternity with Jesus Christ. Quitting is not an option. Take. There's an illustration given. This scares me. I want you to hear me right now. There's an illustration given in Hebrews of, of the same rain falling. And on one hand, it brings forth beneficial things. But on the other hand, it brings forth things that are not beneficial, such as thorns and briars. If there was ever a time for us to make the main thing the main thing, it is now. If there was ever a time for our, our, us to prioritize our lives according to what the Spirit says, it is now. 
We are enjoying the spiritual rain that has fallen. We determine, however, what is brought forth, whether it will be things beneficial to the kingdom or whether it will be things that he rejects. I want you to know it's the same rain. The thorn and the briar are brought forth by the same rain that brings the pretty roses. But I want you to notice his words of encouragement. Hebrews 6 verse 9. But, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you. The writer is saying, that's not what I expect out of you. That's not what I'm prophesying for you. That's what I'm, not what I'm preaching for you. I am persuaded that there are better things for you. And things... And I, I'm going to teach on this again someday, Brother McKinney. But he said, in things that accompany salvation. <laughs> Honey, if you think when you got the Holy Ghost that you'd arrived, you've lost your mind too. Because that's just the beginning. That's just the beginning. If the devil can get you, once you're filled with the Holy Ghost, if he can get you to stop right there, he's won another battle. Because as soon as you become filled with the Holy Ghost, you are a power-packed bundle of possibility. There are so many great things the Lord wants to do through you and on you and around you and to your family and to your loved ones and to your friends. We've got to realize we got to go on. we got to count myself not to have apprehended. But this one thing I do know, forgetting those things that are behind me, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. This scripture right here lets us know, in case you feel like that I'm preaching a getting on to you kind of message, that's the furthest thing from the truth. What he's saying right there, Brother Pete, is the Lord ain't forgot you. When you do everything right and you still have problems, the first thing the devil tells you is what did that get you? Galatians 6 and 9 says, you don't have to go there, but Galatians 6 and 9 says what? Brother David told us it last Wednesday night. But be ye not weary, for in due season ye shall reap. If you faint not. For God is not unrighteous. It would be wrong. It would be wrong of God to forget the fact that you're doing the right thing. Which you have showed toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. They're still doing the right thing, Brother Pete. They're still doing what they're supposed to do. That's why I'm not preaching doom and gloom and you need to straighten up. I'm preaching you're doing the right thing. But my message is, the focus of my message is, is don't lose sight of what you're doing. Don't lose sight of that it's working. Don't lose sight of that going to prayer meeting makes a difference. Don't lose sight of fasting a day makes a difference. Don't lose sight of coming to church like you're supposed to do. It makes a difference. Oh, I'm persuaded better things of you. The Lord's not forgot you. He has not forgotten you. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end.
Sometimes I think, I know evangelists have to struggle, but sometimes they got it made, brother. All they got to get up and do is preach rah, rah, and get the Holy Ghost and everybody feel good. But I've got to come by here and tell you, verse number 12, this is why I came tonight. This is why I came tonight. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience You know how they made it? They didn't give up. Through faith and patience. Through faith and patience. Through faith and patience. Inherit. Inherit the promises. We are persuaded better things. Better things than those that we warned of. The Lord has got his hand on you. We have great examples biblically and also in our church heritage of those who have kept on, who stay focused on the task. Hebrews chapter 11 is a roll call of faith. Uh, over hundreds of years, different people in different situations, and they all stayed focused. Remember when the Lord, oh, let me help somebody right now. Let me help somebody right now. Remember when the Lord found Elijah in a cave and the Spirit of the Lord said to him, what are you doing here? Brother Billy, the Spirit of the Lord said, what are you doing here? Well, well, that mean old Jezebel's been after me. And I... Even I only am left that hasn't bowed their knee to Baal nor kissed him. And then the Lord said again, what are you doing here? I feel like if the Lord wasn't so sweet and nice, he would have said, are you ignorant or what? Elijah, you don't belong in a cave. Hiding from some measly little enemy. God had to get him back on focus. I want you to see this. He told him, he said, go anoint somebody king. Go call Elisha to be your helper. And while you're at it, lest you're stressing too much, I have 7,000 who have not bowed their knee to Baal, nor have kissed them gods. You're not alone. You're not by yourself. You're not in this by yourself. You're not fighting a battle alone. But I come to tell you, get out of your cave. I come to tell you, get out of your hiding place because you need to do the work of the Lord. The greatest weapon you have against the enemy is begin to do what God called you to do, is begin to preach, to begin to teach, to begin to witness, to be a prayer warrior, to be a singer to be a whatever God called you to be get on with the get on if the devil can keep us hid if the devil can keep us running I get some of the best blessings I get in prayer when I forget what I came there for Say, what do you mean by that? Until I begin to get this prayer life that I've got now, thank the Lord, it was always some situation that drove me to pray. Huh? Oh, I prayed. I came early and prayed. But there was a lot of days my prayer meeting was in my truck on the way to work. Whatever I could get in between here and there. And on the way home and in a few minutes throughout the day. But when I came down here and began to cry out to the Lord, it was because something was on me. Because of burden and because I really needed the Lord bad. But Brother Pete, when I began to mature as a Christian, is when I just come to pray and started seeking the kingdom. I started seeking his righteousness. I started asking the Lord to make me right. I started asking the Lord to fix me. To fix me. And when he fixes me, I don't look at things the same way. Amen. 
And then when I started praying the other day, and I thought, oh, God, help me. And listen to me. One of these days, y'all probably going to run me off because I ain't got no sense. Because then, Brother Johnny, the Lord corrected me. He corrected me. And then I said, I'm sorry, Lord. And I got back on track for about 10 minutes. And the next thing I knew, oh, God, I need you to help me. And then I had to repent again. And I wrestled the whole hour. Brother Pete, I wrestled the whole hour to stay focused. Because you see, the devil don't mind me wallowing in the misery of my issues if it keeps me from realizing my potential in him. He don't mind me praying for hours. He won't even mess with me if he's got me off track. If he's got my focus on my problems. If he's got my focus on my issues, because if my focus is on my issues, my faith ain't where it needs to be. Say, well, you're minimizing my problems. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm just telling you. The one that's got the answer to your problems. I'm not minimizing anybody's problems. I lay awake at night worried about you and your issues as if I don't have enough of my own. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm blessed. I'm so blessed. My goodness. Luke 21, stand with me if you would. I'm closing. Luke 21, 33 through 36. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Next verse. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, that's having a good time, and drunkenness, you know what that is, and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. I'm in this church because I don't want to be lost. And if the devil can get my focus on the waves and the wind and off of Jesus then I'll go wonder. But the only hope I have of making it through this trial is to keep my eyes on him. Is to keep my eyes on him. And so that day come upon you unawares. Next verse. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. That day of reckoning is coming for everybody. And please, I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm about to say. But the, ones, the difference between the ones that make it and the ones that don't is the ones that have their focus on him and the ones that have their focus on this. You say, I... If the goodman of the house had known what hour the thief was coming, he'd been watching for him. Isn't that what the book said? First, as a snare. Brother Billy, I don't know if you've ever done it much. I used to see it done a lot. Set out rabbit boxes. And as fast as Peter Cottontail slips past that door, boom, it falls and he's caught. No amount of regret can get you back out of the rabbit box, Brother Pete, brother McKinney. You're there. It's a snare. You don't see it coming. It's a snare that shall come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. 
Next verse. Sister Connie, I don't know if I've told this yet or not, but I'm, I'm going to tell it again. If I have, just pretend like I didn't. But the other night when Brother Billy had you testify, and you testified that you've been doing something that I preached, I wanted to run the aisles. I, did, I, couldn't, hardly just, I couldn't hardly sit there no more. Because that's what it's all about, is take the word and do it. Watch ye therefore, and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man, to stand before Jesus Christ. Watch and pray always. We can't keep going through service without people being filled with the Holy Ghost. If there's a reason, if there's something hindering the Lord from moving, it ain't Him. He ain't the problem. He ain't taking a break. He ain't resting. But we can't get slowful. We can't let, let things that are going on in our life hinder us from our prayer time. We got to rearrange our schedule so we find time to pray. If you got something to do in your prayer time, get up earlier.